Rather than making long, asynchronous requests one by one to load our application, let's use reactive extensions to make asynchronous requests in parallel and load our application faster. So in this .NET MAUI application, I want to asynchronously fetch the cat fact of the day and also asynchronously fetch a list of cat facts. And we'll ultimately display this data on the UI. But I don't want to make these requests one by one sequentially because that'll take extra time and neither of these requests depend on each other. So let's use reactive extensions to make these requests in parallel and load our app faster. First, let's install reactive extensions in our demo.NET MAUI project. In our project, we'll go to manage NuGet packages and we'll search for system.reactive and install the latest version. Now, the first step of reactivity is we need to understand what we want to observe on. So in our case, we want to observe on our asynchronous daily cat fact query as well as our asynchronous catfac listing query. And we want to be notified whenever both of those queries finish. And we ultimately want to kick off and observe on these queries as soon as our view model loads so that we can get data on our UI as soon as possible. So in our catfax view model, let's take observable x and we'll do a fork join. Observable x is where experimental rx.net features live. Yes, fork join is considered experimental. So if you're not comfortable using it, consider using observable.zip, which behaves slightly different, but it'll still work for this demo. But as for fork join, the way fork join works is it takes in multiple observables, executes those observables in parallel, and emits whenever all of the observables have completed. First, we'll join in the observable to asynchronously fetch the daily cat fact, and then another async observable to fetch the other cat facts. As the last parameter to fork join, we can map all of our inner observable results into a single object that fork join will emit. So this single result object will contain the result from the daily cat fact query, as well as the result from the cat fact listing query. Define a result object that'll hold the results of each of our asynchronous queries. We'll call this the cat facts fork join result. It'll contain a property for the daily cat fact, as well as a property for all of the other cat facts. And we'll take both of these properties through the constructor. As the last parameter to fork join, define a callback where we get the results of each of our asynchronous cat fact queries, and we can map those results into a single cat facts fork join result and pass in those results. Now let's subscribe to this observable and update our UI with the cat facts data. Subscribe to the observable, which emits the cat facts fork join result, and we'll update our daily cat facts property on our view model to be the result of the daily cat facts query. And then we'll clear our other cat facts and update our other cat facts to contain the data from our cat facts query. So we'll add each of the cat facts from the cat facts query to the cat facts observable collection on our view model. And as we can see on our UI, we display the cat fact data from our view model that we fetched in parallel via our fork join observable. But as we can see on our cat fact listing data, we actually display each cat fact twice. And this seems to be from executing our observable off of the UI thread. So let's explicitly tell our observable to stay on the UI thread. After fork join, add an observe on synchronization context dot current. And the current synchronization context from the view model perspective is the UI thread that we want to stay on. And as we can see, our cat fact listing data is no longer duplicated. So this is a good start. But now let's talk about handling errors. So in our daily cat fact query, let's hard code an exception for now. And now our application crashes on startup. And this is because we didn't tell our observer how to handle any errors. When we subscribe to our observable, we'll add an on error callback. And when we receive an exception, we'll throw up a message box for fail to load cat facts. Please try again later. And it'll be an error variation. And now our exception gets handled in our observer and our application does not crash. And as expected, our UI shows no data because we failed to fetch. However, only the daily cat fact query failed. So ideally, I would still show the cat fact listing data since that query succeeded. And that really sums up one of the issues with fork join. If any of the inner observables fail, then the entire fork join fails and we don't get to see any of the results from any of the inner observables. So alternatively, Instead of our inner observables for fetching cat facts, throwing exceptions, let's catch exceptions and use a result object. So this result object 
if our cat fat query succeeds, it'll contain the data. And if the cat fat query fails and throws an exception, it'll contain the exception. And ultimately, our inner observables are going to catch errors so that our outer fork join does not entirely fail for one observable failing. And we'll still be able to handle any errors since we'll receive them in our observer. Create a result object that'll be generic for whatever type of data that we have. In this case, the data will either be the daily cat fact or the cat fact listing data. We'll have a property to hold the data for success cases and a property to hold an exception for error cases. Define a constructor that takes in the data and sets the data property and define a different constructor that takes in an exception and sets the error property. Update the cat facts fork join result to depend on the result type rather than the straight up data types. For the daily cat fact async observable, we'll use select to map success cases where we get the daily cat fact data into a result object for our daily cat fact and pass in that data. When the daily cat fact query throws an exception, we'll use catch and map the exception to an observable that returns a cat fact result with our exception this time. And we'll do the same thing for our other cat facts query. We'll use a select for mapping success results to a result for an I enumerable of cat facts. And then we'll use catch to map any exceptions from our cat facts query. And now our observer will be able to handle success cases and error cases for each individual cat fact query. In the observer, if the daily cat fact query through an error, we'll throw up a message box for failing to load the daily cat fact. But if the daily cat fact query succeeded, we'll just update the daily cat fact on our view model. Then for the query for all of the other cat facts, we'll still clear the cat facts observable collection either way, whether it failed or succeeded. But if the cat facts query failed, we'll throw up a message box again for failing to load the cat facts. And if the query is succeeded, we'll simply update our observable collection of cat facts. And we'll remove what we were doing before. And now, with only our daily cat fact query failing, we show a message box for that query failing, but we still show the cat fact listing data since that query succeeded. So overall, even though the daily cat fact query failed and threw an exception, our fork join still finished, and we were able to at least receive the cat fact listing data since that query succeeded. So that just about wraps up error handling. Let's remove our hard-coded exception. Although we could also add a retry to our cat fact query observables in case there's blips where they randomly fail. Add a single retry, a retry of one, to each of our asynchronous query observables. So this just about wraps up our parallel fork join observable. However, you might find this a bit messy all of this just sitting inside of our view model, especially with all these custom result classes. So let's move this observable and all of these result classes to another file, and that'll make it more reusable, and we'll also make our view model less cluttered. So in our project, let's add a new item. We'll call this cat facts observable, make this class static. We could also do this without a static class, but let's just make this class static for simplicity here, but feel free to go for a non-static class if you prefer. Move over all of our helper result objects into our catfax observable file. Make each of these helper classes public instead of private. And these classes need to be public since we reference them in our view model. On our catfax observable, define a static method that'll return an I observable for our catfax fork join result. We'll call this from catfax async. In our catfax view model, copy everything before subscribe and starting with observable x, and we'll copy that into our from capex async method. And that'll be what we return from this method. On our from capex async method, add a parameter for the daily catfax query and a parameter for the catfax query. Reference those queries from our observables. In our catfax view model, delete everything before we subscribe, and we'll take our static catfax observable class and call our custom from catfax async method and pass in our query objects. But in our custom observable method, this still really isn't that readable and our observable chain is pretty long. So we can extract these inner observables to their own observable methods to make this more readable. Select our daily catfact async observable, the entire thing down to and including catch, do a control dot and we'll extract this to a method, which we can call from daily cat fact 
async. For the other catfax query, we can again copy everything up to and including catch, do a control dot again, extract this to a method as well, which we'll call from catfax listing async. And now our custom observable is a bit more readable. Back in our view model where we subscribe, we could also make some readability enhancements in our observer by extracting some methods. In our catfax view model, we can select all of our daily catfax result handling, do a control dot on that, extract that to a method. We'll call this method handle daily catfax result, select all of the catfax listing handling, do a control dot, extract that, and we'll call this handle catfax listing result. And now our observer is also more readable. So just to summarize, we use fork join to fetch our daily cat fact and our cat fact listing in parallel, which allows us to get the data for our application faster rather than making these requests sequentially. We also made sure that we observe on the synchronization context dot current, which is the UI thread, so that our UI didn't accidentally display duplicated cat fact listing data. We also made sure that we catch errors on our inner fork join observables, so that if one observable fails, we don't fail the entire fork join and it calls us to not receive any of our data. Lastly, we extracted our custom observable into another class so that our view model was less cluttered, our observable was more reusable, and so that we could further extract methods in our custom class and make our observable more readable. So hopefully you can apply these reactive extensions concepts to your own .NET application so that you can efficiently fetch data in parallel.